Hello everyone, my name is Diachronic, and today I wanted to tell you the story of Destiny 2 in probably less than 10 minutes. Hopefully, less than 10 minutes. And let me tell you, the story of Destiny 2 goes extremely deep. Like, it, this video could be hundreds of hours long if I went through most of the details, and I am not exaggerating. It could be thousands. It's extremely deep, with all the backstories of all the characters, and I wanted to tell you the gist of it in 10 minutes. And keep in mind that I just played this game. I am not totally sure on everything, so if I get some parts wrong, just let me know. I do want to learn. And so this story begins with the genesis of the universe. Believe it or not, this game is kind of about religion, where it was an empty universe until there were two beings that entered this universe from another interdimensional plane that we now know as the light and the dark. And they're not like us. They're not tangible. You can't really touch them. They're interdimensional. They're everywhere and everything all at the same time. And to entertain themselves, they created matter and life in a game that they called the Flower Game, where they made a wager, where the darkness believed that all life would eventually struggle for power and killing each other through fear and hate until there's only one strongest being left standing Highlander style. And the light, optimistically and contrary, believed that even through their power struggles that life would eventually work together and cooperate to create something new that they themselves haven't created before. And the thing is, apparently the darkness has won this bet nearly every time by whispering in the ears of life, indirectly affecting them and telling them about the others who want to destroy them and how they should destroy the others first to get power. Which kind of, I guess, implies that the universe may have been reset every time the bet is won. And in response, the light created the Traveler, this giant white orb above the Earth. Literally, the staple for the game for the last nine years, most people are like, what is that, a crack ball above Earth? I don't get it. And the Traveler, like its name says, has traveled to many different civilizations, giving each one of them a golden age, and then following their departure, a collapse. And this is true with humanity currently. And before that, we had the Fallen, and then the Hive, and before that, we had the Witness's people, and the Witness is very important. He's the big bad guy of the series. Where we thought the darkness was our enemy, it was actually the Witness for most of the things that we fought against. And the reason why the Traveler always seems to leave the civilizations that it's around is because they do something that makes it afraid of its own life, implying that it's some kind of sentient being. In the Witness's situation, they started experimenting with darkness on the Traveler. Ah, nah! And it took off. And of course, obviously, their civilization collapsed just like everybody who sees the Traveler and then has it leave them. And in their anger and their suffering, they blame the Traveler for creating life and giving them life and power that created their suffering. And so they sought to believe that life equals suffering. And the Traveler is the infinite bearer of life, and so the infinite bearer of suffering. Almost like it's not black and white anymore, that's pretty gray. And so eventually they created the Darkness Ships, the big Doritos that we see throughout the series, and the Witness, which was created from all of its people, and it was hellbent on destroying the Traveler. And before our story even began, the Witness almost destroyed the Traveler. And in a last ditch effort, the Traveler decides to just backhand the Witness straight across the universe with all of its remaining power. And in its last bit of effort, it released the Ghosts, which the Ghosts are little familiar friends that hang around with Guardians and infinitely resurrect them as well as giving them their power for infinite resurrection, all their supers, and fantastic light-based abilities. And the ultimate goal of all of these guardians is to defend the Traveler. Which brings us to our character. We woke up on Earth, near the last city, under the Traveler, with a need to protect the Traveler until it powers up and is capable of doing things again. And weirdly enough, it chooses specific heroes of the past who are perhaps good and light-filled heroes, but we never have any memories of our past. A lot like Las Vegas, pre-Guardian stays pre-Guardian. Except for Crow, he, he absolutely cheated and he learned about his past. Which is, you know, like, now oh, I kinda want some, you know? Like, whoa, who was I before this, you know? And to remind you, the enemies of the light are not the darkness, but the enemy species with the darkness whispering in their ears to claim power by destruction. Whether it be the Hive through sword logic, where they literally power up from killing their enemies, or the Taken King, who resurrects their dead enemies as zombies for his obedient slaves, or the Cabal that want glory, or the Fallen who just want to steal your shit. The darkness finds a way for you to destroy everybody else Highlander style. And that leads us to now, where the Witness has finally cornered the Traveler, prevented it from being able to ever run again, and has used the Veil, which is a curtain between the light and the dark, to enter the Traveler. And so now we must find a way to get in the Traveler and stop the Witness. And we do so in collaboration with a lot of other species. The Fallen of House Light, the Red Legion, and Empress Keitel. Even the Lightbearer Hive with Sabathun. 
It's almost like the whole bet thing. The darkness whispering in the ear, destroy everybody Highlander style, or cooperate with everybody. It's kind of coming true. And here's the thing. We've been fighting for the Traveler for almost 10 years now, and we still don't really know what it is. Or perhaps even who it is. Hopefully in the next year we'll be able to find out why the Traveler even exists in the first place, almost answering the question of the genesis of our universe, which is kind of cool. And ultimately, the most important question, will stopping the witness end the wager? Will the dark or light win? And what happens after that happens? Does the universe reset or do we keep going with a new bad guy? That is the cool part of the story. How does the ending not end things? And there you have it. That's Destiny 2 in hopefully less than 10 minutes, and maybe even less than 7 minutes. Let me know what you think in the comments down below of this story-like style. Thanks for watching. My name's Zychronic. I'll see you guys on the next one.